My name is Hamera Patel. My name is Hamera Patel and I am from Maharashtra and I am your host of the day and part of DM network. Alhamdulillah. So just a quick introduction. These are blog based trainings because we will choose different blogs from the DM website. And today is part two secrets unveiled and there will be part three and possibly four. And Brother Nadeem has been the main author of the blogs. Please have the blogs either open on another tab or printed to help understand the points. Please keep your mic, mic muted unless asked to unmute. And if you have any questions, keep them for the end of the session. So as we are waiting for Brother Nadeem, so without any further delay, Brother Nadeem, over to you. Jazakallah, Sister Hubera. Uh, may Allah reward you and uh, Sister Tuba uh, in helping me to manage these sessions. Uh, they're very unique, very, very different. Uh, so I'll formally start. Uh, in alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah ma ba'd. Asalaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa everyone. Hope everyone is well. I uh, hope you're good, feeling fit and fresh and eager to learn some good tips. Hopefully this will be a beneficial, uh, beneficial session. Uh, we hope, we pray, we make dua that these sessions are beneficial for us to help us in the akhirah because that's when we need it. Uh, so um, those of you who are, because I do a lot of different training sessions, uh, I see some names, but there's probably some names I've never met before. But anyway, in the chat, uh, if you can find the chat box, just tell us uh, which city you're from and what do you do? You know, just that's it, inshallah. Name, city, and what do you do? Um, so I can get some general ta'aruf and introduction, inshallah. Um, and also, is this your first session with me? Is this your first ever DM session? So yeah, in the chat, inshallah, just put in uh, which city, uh, what do you do? And if this is your first session ever or you've attended before. Uh, yes, yeah, so just repeat in the chat. Okay, alhamdulillah. So I see some, I see Sister Lovna saying Maharashtra, India, mashallah. Also, you're same as uh, Sister Hamera, alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, oh. same state, obviously. It's a huge, I'm sure it's a really big state. Yeah, uh, Dr. Hasna Fatma, mashallah, regular from Hyderabad, has, has is not only attended before, but alhamdulillah, part of the DM network. Uh, Sister Zara, good to see you, Sister uh, Zara from Berlin in Germany. And a law student, mashallah. Okay. And Namira says, I'm from Bihar, in India. Uh, not my first. Okay. Same city. Oh, you're in the same city. Okay. So so we should have a good team soon in your city, inshallah, right? Um, alhamdulillah. Uh, brother Muhammad Ali from Karnataka, Bilari. Welcome, brother. Is this your first session? Uh, Sister Nazia, mashallah, who's, uh, you know, mashallah, part of the DM network of Sydney and Australia, down under. Down under for me, by the way, yeah? <laughs> Uh, Noreen, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sister Sana Ansari from Gujarat. And Gulnaz saying salam alaikum. Okay. So uh, is this anybody's first time? Is this your first session with us? Um, if it's your first time, just point the chat. It's my first time. Alhamdulillah. So Zara says your first time. Okay. I, I thought maybe you've come before, but welcome. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope it's benefit. Um, and I hope it's benefit for all of us, inshallah. Uh, Sister Arish says first time. Okay, so welcome to the first time. It's OPPO, OPPO F17. Maybe you have a different name, right? <laughs> I'm not sure if your name is OPPO, but um, yes. Uh, Najaf says yes, I'm uh, first time. Gulnaz from Bhopal, OPPO from Surat. But what's your name, OPPO F17? Like Salah, Rahtra Kutsia, welcome. So there are five people waiting in the waiting room, sisters. So do admit them, inshallah, and we can start. Uh, those of you who are entering right now, so we're just asking everyone in the chat to just put your um, name, city, uh, what do you do, and is this your first session with me or DM? Uh, 
Kerryan says, Asalaamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Asha Sister Kerryan is from um, the States. I can't remember where, but mashallah, welcome again. So those of you entering, just put your name and city. And uh, what do you do? Are you working, studying? And also if this is your first time ever. So sister, when we manage this, sister Homera and sister Tuba, do keep an eye on the admit uh, waiting room because people are coming in, inshallah. Um, so just keep an eye on that, um, and then yeah, they can come, inshallah. Uh, mashallah, we have Sheikh Imam Mikhail from Lohja. I think that's how you pronounce it. It could be Lohja, it could be Lohja, it could be Lohja, but uh, <laughs> Finland. And this is my kind of first time. Yes, you came to our training session, so welcome, Sheikh. Uh, Tanzia Sadiq from Bangalore, Karnataka, first time. Like, salam, welcome. Uh, trust in Allah, very nice name. Trust in Allah, but tie your camel, wow. Uh, Zubair, brother Zubair, Muslim prison from Kashmir, mashallah, yes, we interact. Ayman from Allahabad, India. A lot of people from Kashmir, India, mashallah. Nazifa Patel from India. Muhammad Ali says, first session student. Sanya Imran, uh, I'm Sanya from Lahore, first time. Welcome, sister. Uh, Blochistan, Najaf, mashallah. Hamad from Riyadh, mashallah. He had a really good event with Muhammad Ali and doing some good stuff there. Welcome, brother. Mehran Nisa, Namira from Karachi. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so we'll make a start, inshallah. And, uh, you know, we'll interact more and more. I hope you guys stay until the end. Uh, if you, I hope you don't get bored. But if you have a question, you can type it. Uh, but I would say uh, type it, but also uh, ask the question towards the end again, inshallah. Yeah. So let's make a start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So first of all, um, I'm going to do, I might do a quick review of the first part later. Uh, just for those who, who can catch up, but uh, I just want to repeat and remind why are we doing BBS? Why blog-based sessions? Well, as you can see on the screen, if you go to dialmotivation.com, if you can open another tab or have another device, um, you will see that we have this website, Masha, dialmotivation.com. And on there, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And you know, when I, when I use the word uh, term me and I, I don't mean that in a boastful manner, like, oh, I, me. Um, I'm using it just to explain the context in the background, but all khair is from Allah. And I really, really mean that. As human beings, we are mere, mere tools that Allah uses for, for the khair, right? So uh, alhamdulillah, uh, I have been writing blogs uh, since around 2010. Uh, first, there was just normal thoughts, but then alhamdulillah, they, they turn into practical tips. And some people used to ask me uh, uh, various questions uh, about different scenarios. I'm in this city, I'm in this college, uh, I know this friend, I know this person. How do I start the conversation? What do I say? What do I don't say? So the, people used to ask me all these different ideas and tips. What I started doing is then collecting those ideas on those answers that, that I gave, and I turned it into a blog. And they used to have tips. So tip number one, tip number two. So for example, <clears throat> we have blogs like um, Family Life and Dawa. We have blogs like Hostel Dawa. Uh, we have how to start a conversation. I've also recorded a lot of conversations in the Dawah, alhamdulillah. Um, <clears throat> what then I realized, because alhamdulillah, I've been involved in Dawah since 94. And those are people who had not been involved in Dawah for a long time and are completely new. What I realized, these blogs which I was writing, maybe they can't understand it just through the points. You have to explain them. So this is like a... It's, it's, <laughs> it's like a tafsir of these blogs, right? So I'm going to explain them so that when you read them next time, you understand. And these blogs, brothers and sisters and friends, right? These blogs are written, yes, for you as an individual to give dawah. Yes, for your team, if you want to start a team. But also, it can help you in your life skills. It can help you in your everyday affairs, whether you're at work, whether you, know, you want personal development, whether you uh, want to have a successful career, uh, education, studies, whatever. I really believe that dawah, and especially these blogs, can really help you give you tips. As you will see, I will cover life hacks as well. So it's not purely dawah. Even if you're not involved in dawah, you can actually use these tips in your life and ensure they benefit you. Yeah. So that's what we did. So what's coming up? Well, after this series, which will be probably three or four parts. So this is the second part. There may be two more parts. Uh, we will do something which is called one-to-one -one dawah 
which is one-to-one -one communication. Then we will talk about something called the game plan, where we will cover that, inshallah. Some of these will be one-off. Some might have two parts or three parts. Let's see how it goes. This will be, this will be ongoing, right? So this will be under the category of BBS, inshallah. So again, if you can have the blog ready in front of you now, good. If not, you can read it later. But then now it will make sense. So you can read the blog and watch the video and now make sense, inshallah. But even if it doesn't make sense after all that, I want you guys to ask questions. You can ask the question through our channel. You can email us. You can contact uh, via Facebook, Instagram. Alhamdulillah, we're very active. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so who attended the first part? Um, Secrets Unveiled. Why our motivation? Who attended the first part? Uh, if anybody can just put in the chat, I attended the first, or just reactions uh, hand. Um, and, and I might ask one of you to just give a summary, inshallah. Sister Aisha Tariq says, yes, I attend the first part. Okay, uh, Sister Namira, uh, Namira Ahmed, uh, can you come on mic? If you can come on mic, can you uh, summarize one point that you that made sense that you understood from the past, part one? Uh, Sister Namira Ahmed, can you come on mic? You can't. Okay, no problem. Can you put it in chat? One point you learned. Yeah. Uh, Sister Nazia, are you able to come on mic? Nazia Messia or Mizia. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who can come on mic and came to the, the first part? Sister Lubna Yusuf, you put your hand up. You came to the first part. Can you come on mic and just give me one, one line summary? Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Like, salam. We have a winner. Alhamdulillah. Yes, sister. Jazakallah. Yes, just one point you you understood from the from the from the first part. Uh, yes, uh, like uh, if uh, we should be motivated for dawah, like if we cannot give dawah, then at least we can motivate others to give dawah. Yes, alhamdulillah. Um, so that's, yeah, ex exactly. So a lot of people cannot give, uh, engage in dawah. A lot of us can't, you know, whatever reason, restrictions and uh, other reasons. But at least you can be someone who can encourage others to become a caller to Allah. Yeah. So yes, very good point. Jazakallah, Sister Lubna. Sister Tuba, can you give me one point from the you got from the last session? Assalamualaikum. Uh, uh, you told us about uh, the two organization uh, for uh, Dava training, for Dava actually. Uh, one is Youth Club. Youth Club is mainly for Muslims and Ayra uh, is mainly for non-Muslims. Yes, very good. Jazakallah. So for those of you who have joined us and didn't miss the first part, one of the two best resources to gain our training, to gain our resources, materials, lectures, uh, knowledge, are Ayra and Youth Club PK Pakistan. Uh, youth Club Pakistan are good when it comes to creativity, when it comes to thinking outside the box, when it comes to ideas, when it comes to Muslim youth. They're very creative. You look at their titles, you look at their posters, and you can use it, inshallah. And you can be inspired by it. It's, it's phenomenal, mashallah, right? So uh, Youth Club for Muslim youth and Muslim youth engagement. Aira is more academic and for non-Muslims. So, for example, an atheism, how to articulate the Quran is to find a miracle, the prophethood, and all the other, other tips and ideas. Masha, they got a website, ira.org. Uh, both of these, Youth Club and Ira, they have presence on Facebook. They have a YouTube channel. So I, I'd advise all of you to subscribe, to follow, notifications on. Because if you want to go involve in Dawah, these two are going to be your biggest assets. Yeah, And of course, the third one, is DM Dawa motivation, right? So we have, so you have, so Alhamdulillah all round now, yeah? If you want to get involved in Dawa and you want to gain as many skills and knowledge as possible, Aero for non-Muslims and academic and intellectual content 
Youth Club for Creativity and Ideas and Muslim Youth, DM for practical tips and helping make teams and networking. Yeah, so Dao Motivation, the, the, the website DaoMotivation.com. Uh, you have the YouTube channel, Dao Motivation. So you search on YouTube, Dao Motivation, subscribe, notifications on. Uh, Facebook page and Instagram as well, inshallah. Yeah, so we have, so now, alhamdulillah, there's no excuse, right? You know, people say, oh, I want to give him Dao, da da but uh, I don't know how, uh, I have no knowledge. Well, it's all there. If, if, we, if we were living in the 1980s, then I understand. But now, Somala, because of Wi-Fi, because of internet, you have access to all these resources, alhamdulillah, yeah? No excuse, alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah, I'm just reading some comments. Okay, just hands up. Okay, inshallah. So, that was, the so we covered other points as well, alhamdulillah. But these are some of the points that uh, people gave, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Namira said, I learned about Dao networking and learning, okay, so from IR Youth Club. Excellent, brilliant, alhamdulillah. Um, so, I want to give you another context. When I was writing this blog, four, four years ago, I think, uh, I wrote it with the intention for the DM network members only. So a lot of people were interested in Dow motivation, getting involved, start a team, but they don't know what it was because we have many features. Dow, Dow motivation has many features, right? So they don't, they don't know why it's different. So I wrote this blog to show how DM is different and what we do, but also what your team and what your organization should use. So if you're not with DM, that's fine. It's not about DM because a lot of people I'm talking to are going to start Youth Club, inshallah, and other chapters. Um, you can learn the tips that work because alhamdulillah, last three, four years, we've been very consistent. Being consistent in Dawah in this day and age is a huge thing, right? Showing commitment to Dawah uh, after two years, it's a major, major thing. So alhamdulillah, something's working. Alhamdulillah. So now we want to share these ideas to all of you. So you can implement it on a one-to-one -one level or you can implement it on a on the team or group level, yeah? So this is why we're doing uh, these sessions. So a lot of the content you may read that it's about Dawah motivation, don't think. Think how I can use this in my own life. How can I use this in my one-to-one -one conversation? How can I use it as part of the team? Alhamdulillah. So, um, so moving on, part two, inshallah. I'm going to just scroll down, as you can see. So last time we, uh, you could see it says learning from the best, right? Aira. So we covered that point. Now we're going to the next point, which is Dawa to the youth. Uh, if you can see that, or if you have it opened on your screen at home, inshallah. So, uh, you see, I don't know if you agree with me. If you disagree with me, you can put it in the chat or you can put your hand up, inshallah. You see, what's happening right now, if you go to UK or Australia or the USA and other countries where there's a lot of brothers and brothers uh, teams who are giving, doing Dao stores, giving Dawa on the streets, street Dao. And you may have seen images, right? Have you guys seen images uh, on Facebook? Brothers have a stall or they have a conversation, they have a mic, and they are talking to non-Muslims. They are debating with Christians. They are debating with atheists. Um, there's a lot of discussions going on, right? You see that. So you see a lot of stalls all around the UK and Europe. Mashallah, Finland brothers have, have started as well, alhamdulillah. Um, so you see a lot of their table, and this is what I noticed, on the table, the content is all for non-Muslims. So Christians, Hindus, atheists. And when somebody comes, the brothers of the stall, all they will talk about is non-Muslims, right? Uh, so that's so only, the only cater for non-Muslims. Uh, so now, when you move away from this, when you think about brothers and sisters who are practicing, so those who are linked to masjids, institutions like Al-Huda and others, uh, you know, learning knowledge, Quran, Hadith, uh, Arabic, grammar, you know, Tajweed, uh, all the tafsir, they are learning all this. So what's happening right now in the Muslim Ummah in the world is you have, for the practicing people, who, if you're already practicing Islam and you want to advance your knowledge, there's a lot of stuff out there, yeah? Offline, online, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of options, right? Courses, classes, you know, in person with Sheikh, this, that, lots, yeah? And for non-Muslims, there's the Dawa stores all around. What's missing are Dawa stores on content, especially Dawa stores, if I, from that point of view, for Muslim youth. The only time 
that we have tried to have Dawa stall only for Muslim youth is youth club in Islamabad and Karachi and Lahore. And I've not seen it anywhere else, hardly. Yes, from Muslims, and they may, you know, they may have one flyer for Muslims, but what we need is we need to have a big focus. All of us need to have a big focus on Dawa to the Muslim youth. So yes, you learn Arabic, Yes, you increase your knowledge, Quran and Sunnah, of course. And yes, you invite non-Muslims to Islam. You talk about atheism, Christianity, Tawheed, of course. But what about the Muslim youth? Have we, are we going to ignore them? Or are we just going to be angry at them? Do this, don't do that. Yeah, I know this is a different course, affected out of Muslim youth, but it's very important. This has been the cornerstone of DM. So we need to engage seriously. We need to organize stuff, whether it's stalls or events, online or offline for Muslim youth. It has to be very creative, has to be relevant topics, and it needs to be done, subhanAllah. Yeah? So we completely ignore this part. So again, repeat, if you're already a practicing Muslim, you can attend this class, that course, that workshop, alhamdulillah. If you're non-Muslim, you'll see a stall for you, leaflets for you, books for you, right? Especially in the UK. But for Muslim youth, I, and you know, subhanAllah, I've seen this in London. I've, I've witnessed this. Where in London, I'm not going to give you which stall, uh, the brothers, when it came to normals, they were active, they were talking, they were, they were energetic, they were, they were like, you know, enthusiastic, and they had stuff. Uh, uh, two youth, Muslim youth came just, you know, out of curiosity on the streets of London, and they didn't know what to say to them. The dua, they go, you know what they said? <laughs> they said, uh, oh, hi, you Muslim, oh, Salaam alaikum, wa alaikum, um, do you know any non-Muslims? And the, the Muslim youth say, yeah, I've uh, got friends. Uh, yeah, give this leech to them. Goodbye, on your way. Wow. Subhanallah. So we need stalls where you can, or you know, events or halakas. So when you do, so when so when I think of halaka, when you think of halaka, the idea of halaka is this, and agree again, disagree with me. Uh, halaka is we are going to go through uh, this juz and a tafsir, and one brother going to speak for about forty-five minutes, tafsir of Surah Yusuf or Kaha or whatever, and a couple of questions at the end and gone. That's what we think of halaka. We need to start thinking Muslim youth halakha. Muslim youth halakha is ha Muslim youth halakha. How is it different? You're going to, and this is good. This may be shocking. The brother, you still, you can still prepare something. The topic has to be relevant, right? Let me ask you, uh, let me ask you a question in the comments, right? Muslim youth who are not practicing Islam, Muslim youth, what do they love and talk about? Give me some examples. In the chat, what do they discuss when they're with their friends? What are they? What are they into? What are their hobbies? What are their interests? Fashion, movies, songs, fashion, music, music, makeup, foods. Yes, movies. Netflix, cars. There you go. So why not game? Yes, good. So let me let me choose gaming. I will use that. Yeah. So why can't you call your halakha? Imagine a poster now. You have a halakha series, yeah? You're going to say Muslim UFC, whatever you can call it. Today, we're going to discuss gaming, the good, the bad, the ugly. You're not attacking it. You're not condemning it. You're having a discussion on it, yeah? Gaming, followed by, followed by a game. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's mubah, right? It's allowed. So maybe in a house, and, and this is creativity, and I want to cover creativity in a minute. I might come back to this point. You have a halakha at someone's house, because Halakha is usually in someone's house, a living room, where they have a TV and they have a console, Xbox or PS4 or whatever. Uh, it's there. You get youth round. Today we discussed the, the brother this week's we talk about gaming. This is my thoughts. You know, first of all, I used to love playing Call of Duty, this and that. But then you've got to give Nasiya, okay, you know, but do you, do you think not think that gaming could be obsession? Gaming could take over your life. There's nothing wrong playing with it, but play it within reason. Yeah, what is the original purpose of life? Yeah, I, the I clearly says we are you, we, you weren't created out of play just to is you know is life just a game, right? So you can have the discussion, and so the discussion. Remember, I'm discussing. I'm being very random here. A halakha. The discussion should be 15 minute presentation, 15 minutes, even 15 minutes too long. Remember, Muslim youth they can't focus more than five minutes, right? 15 minute presentation on gaming, on love relationships, on uh, social media on whatever topics that are you know relevant to them. We look as practicing Muslims. If you want to give a halakha and somebody said to you, "Okay, choose whatever topic you want. Choose whatever topic you want." If so, if they if they ask me, I'll say, "Okay, whatever I want, I like." 
I want to talk about the Abbasid Khalifa, Khilafa, from, you know, 780 to 1080, and who were the Khalifas and the history and Bogu. I want to do that. Uh, you asked another brother, okay, brother, what do you want to, you know, what do you want to do? I want to talk about, uh, you know, the, the differences between Hanafi fiqh and Shafi fiqh. <laughs> Brothers, remember, we, we need to speak from the, from the Muslim youth point of view. What will they love? What did they want to talk about? What would attract them, right? So we need to think of topics that are relevant to them, yeah? 15 minutes presentation and then open it up to conversation, open it up to discussions, open it up to questions, encourage questions, get them to give their opinions. That's the youth halakha. So we need to have youth halakhas. We need to have stores on, for Muslim youth. We need, have, we need to have flyers and content for Muslim youth. We need to think like that, inshallah. Yeah? So there should be stalls. Our conversation should be that. Inshallah, we, you know, we have a course called Effective Doubt on Muslim Youth. Mashallah, two, three sisters are nearly ready to, inshallah, uh, present this. Sister Noreen, Sister uh, Ariba, Sister Eamon. Mashallah, they are almost qualified or some are not qualified to actually deliver this. So you can arrange it for your team, inshallah, no problem. Um, and again, look, for Muslim youth, just want to give another point. As previously, go to the Youth Club Facebook page. Go to their photos or albums. Scroll down as long as you can. Scroll down 2021, 2020, 19, 2018. Go all the way back. Pick out those designs which, which you like. Very, you know, Some of these designs are outstanding. Save it under your phone's album. So save, click save. And either you can use a poster, no problem, inshallah, Sadka Jaria. And I say this as a senior member, just don't use the logo, of course. Use the poster, use the font, but look at the title and the content and the theme. They are very well thought out. Not only are they topics, but they actually give you good topics, uh, good titles as well, inshallah. Yeah. And they're all relevant for Muslim youth, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So that's a very good resource, very good tip. Youth Club PK Facebook page, go to the albums, go to photos, scroll down, save as many as you can, and you'll get ideas for your halakha, for your team, content, talk, whatever, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Just looking at some comments here, money, food, reels, yeah, <laughs> subhanAllah. Uh, trust in Allah. One thing I had seen is Muslims are feeling ashamed to be Muslim. Yeah, they're ashamed because they do not know Islam. They are ashamed because they do not know Allah. So let's tell them about Allah. Be aware of the latest trends. Exactly. Wani, Wani says, I think most important issues are various and one of them are marriage compared to boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. Again, if you, if you say marriage and a poster or halakha or content, it may not be as attractive. But if you say, you know, love and relationships and then take it to what marriage, that would make more sense, inshallah. Okay, got it. Good. Right, moving on. So Muslim youth and Dawah. Uh, Dawah, North Muslims, obviously, we, co we covered that. Effective tips. Right, what do I mean by that? You see, I noticed that a lot of brothers and sisters who contacted me for Dawah, um, they organize an event, or they will speak to a non-Muslim or a Muslim youth, and they'll be, they'll be very like, for example, like a, like a lecture. So people think that, okay, if, if, I can, if I find a 17, 18 year old uh, Muslim guy, a young guy or a girl, and they're involved in certain actions, if I speak to this person for one hour, nonstop, and give Quran, Sunnah, Quran, Hadith, evidence, 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 they will change. Now, I'm not saying they won't. They could, you never know, because guidance can come in various forms. But if you want to have effective da'wah, effective tips you need, to th you need to think about things like connection you need to think about things like is the person actually listening to me i'm going on and on and on but are they listening to me right so what we do at our motivation and through again you can look at our videos our website our facebook page we are giving you tips of how to make how to engage effectively yeah you can either just say as much as you can give a lot of evidence and hope for the best Look, I've, I've passed it on. Let's see what happens. No, no. Or you can be effective. Look, when it comes to marketing, look at, mark, look at social media marketing. Do Netflix, Netflix, for example, Netflix. When they break out a new movie or a new series, do they just give a title and hope for the best? <laughs> they will think about the title, what time to put it, what, you know, the prime time where people see this, 
adverts, what kind of adverts are they gonna, even the ad, they may make a promo, the editing, the visuals, the music, are, are they not thinking like this? Because this is their dawa, the Netflix, this is their dawa, right? They're calling you to watch their content, calling you, calling you. And look how much hard work, and they're not just making any, they're not making a black and white poster, a uh, new, new series uh, starting on Monday, 9 p.m., that's it. No, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of marketing. Anything, anything you think of, any brands, look at how much marketing, how much advertising, how much thinking, how much is going to be. And because so they, were, they, are, they are being effective. They're very effective. When it comes to our work, when it comes to our dawah, yeah, just make a black and white poster, get a mosque, get a sheikh, and just hope for the best. <laughs> Allah has given us aql, Allah has given us a brain. These, this brain that Allah has given us and bless the Muslim ummah as well as non-Muslims, we're not using it. We're not using it enough for the dawah. We're not. We're just using a little bit of it. So let's use it. Let's think about it, inshallah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, of course, results in the hands of Allah. Absolutely. But, you know, like I said, when it comes to exams, how much a lot of your students, right? Are you just going to, uh, like, let's say, I don't know. Um, let, let me give a practical example. So who is studying what these days? Give me tell me what you're studying like what specific topic so just a, just your your degree and what topic are you studying these days so i can give you an example any students here dental okay sheikh masira norain dental what are you studying these days maheen says acca what are you studying these days physiology okay so when it comes to physiology, Sheikh Musira, physiology, are you just going to pick up a small leaflet and read about physiology? Ah, oh, right, got it. You're going to study it, review it, make notes, underline, check references, watch videos, listen to audios, whatever, right? Same with pharmacy, same with physics, same with cancer bioinformatics. Wow, wow, what's that? So, uh, teaching, yeah? Are you just going to read one small leaflet and say, yeah, I know it. No, you're going to, Invest heavily into it, right? And you're going to prepare. You're going to prepare for it. You're going to prepare for exams, right? A lot of you are going to prepare for exams. You're going to have a, a plan. You're going to study from, I don't know, uh, eight till midnight. You're going to study Monday to Friday. You're going to have like maybe water or drink or energy drink or something. You're going to have a, a desk. You're going to have a place. You're going to have, obviously, if you can, a nice environment. Would you study? Uh, would you study in the middle of a bazaar where there's noise and there's horns and everything, right? Or would you study in a place which is cool, nice, quiet? What are you doing there? You're making it so, if, so you can pass those exams effectively. Let's bring all that effort that we do in the dunya, exam studies into our dawah. Just start thinking, start doing shura with each other, right? I know this, I know this non-Muslim person. What, you know, ask your friends, how should I approach them? Maybe some person has got a better way, a better you know, a tariqa to give doubt to them. Maybe they've been successful. Yeah. So let's start thinking. Let's do things with Ihsan. You know, there's a scholar called Sheikh Yusuf Qardawi, right? He says that Allah loves, Allah loves when one of you is given a task and that he or she does it in the most excellent manner. So you're not just doing Dawah. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, here's a Christian. I'm just going to go up to him and say, look, the Bible's wrong. And it says this, 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 and then goodbye. Thank you. No. Do it in the most excellent manner. Yeah. Do it with Ihsan. Let's bring Ihsan in our da'wah. It's very, very important. So, again, a lot of da'wah training. There's a lot of da'wah training out there. By IRA, uh, Y Islam, uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, IRF, IPCI. I mean, there's so many. Yeah, You, you search da'wah training. There's many, many da'wah training out there, right? Um, and there's many seminaries who are giving knowledge and, 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 and academic stuff. So, what, what we need to also now start doing, if you either you are part Either you are, either you are linked with a DAO train or, or, or like an organization, or their DAO trained uh, or DAO trained department. What they what people need to have, or what you need to have, what they need to have, is a practical tips department. Practical tips. Okay, you've learned, you've learned how to engage with an atheist. Let's say you've learned, an, or, uh, I don't know, you've learned, uh, you've learned the design argument in depth, advanced. You know that you went to this tra training, this sheikh, this brother workshop online, 
and it was like two, three hours or four hours, and you learn a design argument, how to prove the existence of God, right? Now, are you just going to go up to an atheist and say, hi, hello, how are you? Listen, uh, you know, the universe uh, it has a laws of gravity. Do you agree or disagree? Are you going to go straight into it? No, I'm sh- so the, what we're trying to do is give you practical, effective tips. Do you not want the person to listen to you in the first place? You can't just go and lecture him. It needs to be a conversation. You need to prepare his heart first. You need to win his heart. You, there needs to be initiation. There needs to be connection of hearts. There needs to be trust. They need to be impressed. Do, do, you not, do you not guys agree that if you put these tips into place, impress them, connect with them, heart to heart, when you know uh in proper initiation get to know them introductions do you would you not agree that if you did that you'll get a more better chance than them listening to your argument rather than just going straight in the argument what do you think do you understand the point so this is just give an example of effective tips we need to have an effective tip every group every team needs to have effective tips department yeah you've got the knowledge but now how do we on a practical everyday level implement it because we're not here to give lecture, we're here to converse, we need to talk, we need to communicate. Yeah, so effective communication, what to say, what not to say, how to win their heart, you know, even subhanAllah, you know, complimenting someone. Complimenting someone is a whole science in itself. Uh, there's a big long comment. So, Sister Safia, you give a long comment, two young boys are busy in laptop, for one of them to the high city, but they... Ignore so that way frustrated. Okay, Sister Homera or Tuba, if you can make a note of that, inshallah, I'll come back to that. Try to keep the comments short, uh, sisters, because it's uh, and brothers, sisters, because it's Zoom and you know, try and show. Or if you really have a long comment, wait and then come on mic, inshallah, yeah, which is even better. So, my point is the point is what was the point is we need to have effective tips, and that's what Dow Motivation does, alhamdulillah. Yeah, again, I'm not trying to big up market Dow Motivation here, yeah? I'm just saying this is what we do, which is different. We need to bring something fresh to the ummah. We need to bring there's, there's Dow organizations out there, there are people giving Dow online, offline, but there needs to be a freshness, right? And that's what we do. Yeah, we are doing things which other people are not doing. We should not do the same thing that other people are doing. If there's already, if you're in a city, and they give down to Christians and they're very warm and they're beautiful dawah, then there's no need for DM or anyone else. You just join that. You join that. So what we do in DM is we we uh, we are introducing things which are not being done. Yeah. And I think one thing not being done is effective tips, like I like I just said. Yeah. Let's think about how to be effective in our conversations, how to be how to have a, a really extremely effective event that people actually listen, right? Um I mean, I, I want to give you an example of an effective tip, inshallah. Uh, some of you have heard this before, right? So, do you agree, guys, that we are living in a world where everybody has WhatsApp, first of all, everyone, almost everyone has WhatsApp, right? Even the, the old uncle Babaji in an Indian Pakistani village on a Charpai, even he's got WhatsApp, right? <laughs> okay, no, that's true. That's universal now. Isn't, isn't it also universal now that there's videos going? First, there was a time when we used to just receive videos. There was that one particular person six, seven years ago. Somehow he worked out sending videos. Now, we, all of us are not only receiving videos, we are sending videos. Two-minute clip, three-minute clip, either YouTube clip or actual clip, right? Isn't it true? We are receiving videos, we are sending it forward, forward, forward. Okay, so there's like a video highway. There's like a, you know, imagine a, a busy motorway with five lanes, Videos coming, you know, I'm going to say in Urdu, videos, Ariya Jari, Ariya Jala, there's like videos, so many every day, hundreds of it. If you're, if you're on, if you've got a big contact list and your mm-hmm. groups, there's going to be so many videos, your data, your, you know, your, your phone memory can't handle it. Okay. If you, so let's say, has anyone, if I, if I was, if there was a non-Muslim, of the, okay, not the Muslim, let's say there's a, a Muslim guy in his thirties, Muslim guy in the thirties who is not worshiping Allah. He's not worshipping Allah. He's got lazy working, which is a typical situation. Right. It, right. There's a video called The Throne of Allah. I'm sure you guys have heard it. I've seen it. It's one of the best videos. I always recommend it. I always start it. It's beautiful. 14 minutes. Throne of Allah. It's Iman boosting. It's a fantastic, beautiful video made by Merciful Servant many years ago. I always talk about this video. because It is absolutely phenomenal, right? Okay. So if you have this person, let's say his name is Jamil, right? His name is Jamil. You just send, so Jamil probably receives hundreds of videos every day. 
because he's on WhatsApp. So are we, if you just send a video and that's it, you just hope for the best. So you could you could say you could send a video to Jamil, uh, forward it to him, you four to five people, and then hope for the best. Let's see what happens. Effective tips is what? That's so that's one way. Sending the video done, hamda I've done my dawa. Dawa hoga. I've done my dawa. Alhamdulillah. That's one. What is effective tips? Here's an example. You say you send her a message. You say, Salam Jamil, how's it going? And then you wait. <laughs> and then maybe an hour later, he says, Walaikum Salam, Nadim. How are you? Long time. And then you reply, yeah, you know, all good house, family, house things. And then he'll reply, yeah, it's okay, it's good, good, you know, just busy at work, whatever. And then you say, oh, Jamil, uh, I, want to send, I want to send you something, this really, really good video. Do watch it. And you wait, 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 wait. Clock is ticking, tick, tick, tick. And he replies, oh, uh, yeah. He'll say, yeah, you know, uh, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, sure. You know, like, you can imagine, you know, some wording. Yeah, yeah, okay. You don't send it. Day goes past. Next day, you send a message again. Jamil, salam alaikum. How's it going again? What's happening? What are you up to? Uh, yeah, work salam. Yeah, uh, yeah, I work again. You know, thanks for messaging me again. You know, it's good to talk to you. Uh, yeah, Jamil. Uh, and then you reply, Jamil, there's a video I saw. Absolutely fantastic. It's magnificent. It's like, it's so good. You have to watch it. Then he re replies, Yeah, uh, you mentioned it. Why do you, yeah, you said you're going to send it, but you didn't send it. Why do you send it? And you say, Yeah, yeah, you're sure. I'll send it. I'll send it. I'll send it. You don't send it. <laughs> what are you doing? You're building the hype. You're getting them curious. Third day goes past. You say, Salam alaikum. And by the way, I've done this. I've actually done this. Salam Jamil. This time he goes, Wa alaikum salam. Where's the video? <laughs> he'll, he'll, he, here's someone who's non practicing. He'll ask for the video because you'll be building up. He goes, Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have to watch it. You have to wait. He goes, Yeah, yeah, send it then. You keep, you keep saying, you know, now he's eager. Now he's curious to watch it because pre-effective tip, the other style, if you sent it, he may have watched, may have watched it, may have not, may have scrolled past. Because you know, everybody's scrolling, scrolling. Lots of videos are coming. Why your, why should he watch your video? Because you built it up. You built it up. You've built a suspense, hype. Yeah. You really want to know. Now he's going to be curious. He goes, you know what? There must be something special about this video that he keeps talking about it. Yeah. That's just one effective tip, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, when you, start, when you start thinking effective tips, when you start thinking outside the box, when you go for long walks, yeah? So here's another tip, right? <clears throat> here's another tip. And this tip, this is a life hack tip as well, inshallah. For those of you, because I did say in the poster, it's not going to be dawah, it's life hacks as well. If you want to give advice to someone, it could be someone who's smoking cigarettes and it's killing them. If you want to give the advice to someone, what you should do is go for a long walk. Device at home, no devices, no phones, nothing. Not even your MP3 player or iPod, nothing. Just go for a long walk and say, okay, what can I say to this person? How can I approach it? But yeah, he will say this, but then he might listen to this. Well, ah, oh, you know, I saw some, ah, oh, yeah. So subhanAllah, when you walk and subhanAllah, when you go for a walk, that's the time when you have no distractions. The mind starts ticking and the brain will come out with a solution and say, okay, I want to try this. Because you may watch the t uh, an advert, you may you may attend a lecture many years ago. Remember, we you know all this information we pick up is stored in the back of our mind, subconscious, right? And we just store it; it's there, but we don't use it because we get busy in life and a lot of information coming. When you go for a long walk, it'll click. Oh yeah, that video. Somebody said that I how he said that the best thing to do is show them graphics or whatever. I'm just being very random. Do you see what I mean? Whenever you give someone advice. Go for a long walk first. Go for a long walk without any, without any distractions. You will be inspired. Ideas will come and flow. Yeah? Okay, alhamdulillah. So I'm just giving you two tips there, but this is what we do. We are always giving different tips. Yeah? That's what we do at DM, and that's what you should be doing as well. Whichever organization, whichever team you're, playing, you're, you're starting, <clears throat> give each brothers and sisters a task, right? Assign somebody could be in charge of events. Somebody could be speakers, somebody could be designers, somebody could be finance, could be, but then have one or two people. Your, your, and it has to, has to be this kind of right people, right? You, you guys need to think of practical tips, which is you have to maybe Google or search. You can start with DM or other, how to do this or how to do that. Yeah, life hacks, inshallah. Yeah.
Yeah, long, long drive, but walk is good because walk is exercise as well. And, you know, there's something in, subhanAllah, you know, when, you're, when you go for long walks and when you start breathing in and out, there's something happens. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I think walking more than driving, inshallah. And, of course, if you're in a scenic area, even better. So, look, this is what we're doing Dao, Dao Motivation. We've been given Dawah how to give Dawah in the living room. Like we had, a, we had a live session called Lounge Dawah. And when was the last time you heard any organization, Dawah organization, talk about Lounge Dawah? That's an effective tip. Yeah. So, um, so instead of getting ignored and told to shut up in street Dawah or one to one Dawah, if you learn to, learn to think, how can I be effective in my conveying? How can I be effective in relaying this information, inshallah? Yeah. It's very important. Most of the time. Okay, 12.41. I want to do one more point and then we'll open the questions because I'm sure you guys have got questions. So start having your questions ready, please, brothers and sisters, yeah? Okay, this is slightly linked to, to effective tips. So I'm just going to go down. But if you can see on the, on the thing, creativity, yeah? Creativity, here we go. Creativity and thinking outside the box. So I want to ask you guys, in fact, if someone come on mic, just put their hand up, I can come on mic. What do you understand by... Uh, creativity, like how can you define creativity and thinking outside the box and maybe give an example as well, yeah? So if someone come on mic, put their hand up first, I would like you to explain to me what you understand by creativity um, and thinking outside the box and give an example, inshallah. So Sanadia says two, two to six kilometers every day. Wow, that's inspiring. I need to do that. So next time, Sister Nazia, when you go for long walks, you should be thinking of different ideas for Dawah, inshallah. Or how to build a team. Or how to get more people involved in the team. All right. So uh, does anybody know, or can anyone give me a definition of creativity and thinking outside the box? And, and give me an example. Put your hands up, please. Yes, Sister Namira and Sister, Sister Namra and Sister Namira. Oh, okay, you're giving the answer. Can one of you come? I know Sister Namira can't. Sister Namra Ahsan, can you come on mic and give an example? Or anyone else? Masha, there's uh, 75 people watching. Alhamdulillah. Can anyone come on mic? I'm sure... I'm sure not all of you are shy. Is everyone shy today? <laughs> is this is this shy hour? And you know what's, what's coming up after this? Confidence. <laughs> the next point, which we may do next time, is confidence, right? Uh, so Noreen, but so Noreen, you're always putting your hand up, so I want to come back to you because you're always, mashallah, talking, alhamdulillah, mubarak, may Allah bless you, but I want to get, get people out of their shell. Come on, brothers. Usually brothers are very brave, you know. Lions. Ah, brother Hamad Aziz. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. We have one lion at last. <laughs> <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. Um, somebody, Hamad, somebody has to come up. Yeah. Yes, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. Can you give a... What do you understand by creativity, thinking outside the box? Can you give an examples? Like, uh, I would say... Uh, don't be straightforward and be a little bit thoughtful. Yes. This is the first thing that comes to my mind. Okay. Can you give an example like you used or seen, and not just in Dawa, but anything in like some example of thinking outside the box or creativity? creativity. So uh, I would say link it to what uh, is happening or what you have uh, uh, experienced with that person just a little while ago while you are going to Give him, a, give him a message. Okay. All right. Okay. Interesting. Alhamdulillah. Anyone else? I would like to hear one more person. What do they understand about creativity or thinking outside the box and give an example? Farhan says, I want to start a youth organization with my friends in Pakistan to give doubt to people. to educate. Brother Farhan, which city? And forget, why are you starting an organization? Join our DM. Start a DM chapter or YC. Whichever is more, you know, that's my uh, but okay. Let me let me give let me give give you like a hint. Love struck. How is love struck like connected to what I'm asking? So 
So if I say love struck, how is that connected to the dawah? Okay, let me let me go through it. But if anybody else wants to uh, add, put their hand up. Look, when we did the workshop Love Struck back in 2012, yeah, the original poster is just Love Struck with a heart and arrow, and that's it, and the venue. How is that creativity? That's creativity because we we the the topic is love and relationships. We could have just the non-creative way is love and relationships. Come and find out is haram, and come find out the solution from Islam. That's it. Yeah, come and find out, you know, uh, how to get, how to have halal nikah. That's a very non-creative title. What we did is thought love struck. And what's more, what's creative is the poster itself is creative, thinking outside the box. And thirdly, the first 20 minutes, half an hour is comedy. Ziaba is, is funny. He's making jokes. He's connecting with people. That's a beautiful, amazing example of creativity, thinking outside the box. Yeah. So this is what we were saying. We need to start thinking outside the box, right? Do things differently. Be unique, right? Brainstorm. And again, this may, may be similar to the effective tips, right? Yeah. Um, you know, have a unique setting, yeah? If you're always giving a lecture or a dars or halakha in a mosque or in a community center, why not try in a beach? Why not try on top of a mountain? Why not try in a historic area? Why not try in a castle, like ruins, you know, some castle ruins. Why not try in, in the desert? Why not try next to something famous? Different things, yeah? Um, a, a natural beauty spot. What about food? Okay, I've got some examples here, right? And somebody, mashallah, did put on there as well on the chat, right? Don't, you know, when you want to give refreshments, don't think boring curry, salan, you know, roti, biryani, yeah, chicken biryani. Think... All right, think what what do the people of Latvia, which is a Baltic state, what do the people of Latvia have for snacks? Do we know? I mean, a lot of us have not even heard of Latvia. <laughs> but what do Latvians are human beings? It's this Latvia country is on the same planet Earth as us. Let's start thinking outside the box. What do I mean by that? Let's start thinking outside our Karachi. Let's start thinking outside Lahore. Let's start thinking outside Pakistan. Let's start, let's start thinking outside Bihar. Let's start thinking outside Mumbai, Delhi, and India. Let's start thinking outside Southeast Asia. This world is huge. Let's start thinking Mexican. Let's start thinking Japanese. Let's start thinking Australia. That's what that's literally called thinking outside the box. Our box is okay. I need to do an event. I need to do an event. Okay, I'm gonna look. So let's so let give me, uh, you're you're in Delhi. You're in Delhi. You're in Delhi, right? Can anyone give me an example of a area of Delhi? Uh, De Delhi has different areas. Like Karachi, you have Malir, you have Bhadrabad, etc. Can someone give me an example of Delhi? Which area does it have? Like areas of Delhi, zones or whatever. Okay, Jamia, Milia, Sarojna. Okay, so what we're doing now is if you do an event, you're going to see what do the people of Nizamuddin or Red Fort do? This is you, narrow-minded, yeah? So you only search... Red Fort, may they do this, they have this event. Okay, I'm going to copy. Thinking outside the box is what? Thinking beyond Nizamuddin, Red Fort, Shaheen Bagh. Thinking outside the box is thinking outside Delhi. Thinking outside the box is thinking outside your state. Thinking outside India, thinking outside Southeast Asia, thinking outside, uh, thinking outside the world, thinking, <laughs> thinking galaxy, subhanAllah. Yeah? If there are other human beings, and other you know beings on other on the other planets why why are we stuck to just red fort or you know a, Mal a malir or subhanallah you know a part of chennai or or, or ali aligarh that's called thinking outside the box yeah so what do the people of latvia have uh, snacks yeah maybe this is research yeah what do the people what you know fiji what what is the most nicest cool or hot drink of fiji fijians they drink. What do they have? They, maybe they've got a special coffee that we never had. Maybe it's a banana flavored coffee. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what do people of West Africa have for dessert? So if imagine you had a poster and you said, uh, we're going to discuss, you know, flower topics, social media. We're going to discuss Instagram, TikTok, right? The good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. We're going to have a discussion on TikTok, right? Or even TikTok skills or whatever. Then you say refreshment provided. Uh, Latvian dessert, 
are followed by Fijian coffee, followed by West African delicious dessert. You're making people curious. You're thinking outside the box. Are you getting the point? Are you getting the point, brothers and sisters? Yeah. So let's start thinking outside our city, our, our mahalla, our city, our country, our, our, our continent. Let's start thinking beyond our continent, inshallah. Yeah. I want to give one example uh, of the seerah because it's not made up. This is under Mubah, and then we'll continue this uh, in part three. Uh, there's a, there was a famous wrestler uh, called Rakanna in the time of the Prophet, upon him be peace. Um, basically, the Prophet, peace be upon used a very creative way of getting him or, you know, calling to Islam. Well, he, he was a famous wrestler. Rakanna was a champion wrestler of his time in Makkah, right? So the Prophet challenged him. And he accepted the challenge. He threw him. The prophet threw Rukanda, the champion wrestler. And Rukanda said, let's do it again. Maybe he's thinking the prophet got lucky. First time lucky, beginner's luck. The prophet challenged him and he threw him again. He beat him again. And he accepted Islam. Rukanda accepted Islam. So, uh, so what, what, that, what is that? That's creativity. Uh, let's go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. We know the famous story, right? When he, when he knocked off the idols, when the people are away and when they came back who did this who who broke our idols what did ibrahim alayhi salam say to ask the big one creativity thinking outside the box being sharp subhanallah yeah so, uh, brother zubair asked a very interesting thing needs more knowledge no it's not about knowledge it's not it's not always about knowledge yeah it's research but not knowledge it's the first thing is to actually start thinking outside the box yeah start thinking beyond what you have learned and know and your area. Yeah. Like I, I'll give you a clear example. If you, Brother Zubair, where do you live? Which city or area do you live? Kashmir, Badgam. Okay. So <clears throat> maybe you can't travel, it's not easy, but you can travel virtually. So start finding out. Like I just gave you examples. Uh, what do people of Mexico have? What do people of Alaska have? What do people of uh, New Zealand, South Island have, right? Maori, yeah? Start thinking about that, inshallah. And that's it. This is a bit of research. It's not about knowledge. Um, and also the more, that, again, with anything, this is my last point, the more you get involved in dawah, the more you start being creative, the more you start doing non-typical yeah, the more you start doing something really different, as long as mubah, as long as the sharia allows it, the more you start stretching, the mind needs to be stretched. The brain, because you, you're not, you, the mind needs to be stretched. So start thinking, start pushing, start being confident, start being daring. Yeah, yeah you know, if you've been given, if you're doing a halakha and it's the same, you know, uh, I'm giving Riyadh, Riyadh example, same um, uh, rice and chicken. Uh, I can't remember the name the Saudis call it, subhanAllah, because I, I used to live there in Qasim. Same rice, same chicken, same same plate. same. <laughs> so do something different. This time, bring it in a tray. Maybe, maybe I don't know, bring it in a, I don't know, something, something different. If, it's, if you're drinking fizzy drinks all the time, this time maybe have pineapple juice with combined with other. Oh, what's this? Yeah, you know? So start create. the more you start thinking like that. So, so the first thing, start thinking outside the box, it, it, there's actually two things. One is one thing to think outside the box, one to do it. I need to think differently. I need to be different to my town. I need to be different to people around me. I need to do something really unique and independent, not just follow, not just be the crowd. That's the more. Number two, research. Just to research. You have Sheikh, Uncle Google. Uncle Google Saab is there. Just the, the, the type and you get your ideas, inshallah. Anyway, uh, let's go to questions, inshallah. Uh, Sister Mariam has a question. Sister, can you come on mic and ask your question? We'll open it up to everyone else, inshallah. Bismillah. Sister Mariam Rashid, you have a question. Can you come on mic and ask the question? Oh, okay. Mike, who's Mike? Oh, you mean MIC. I thought, I thought, I thought you're, you're the non-Muslim guy is called Mike. Uh, all right, you've asked a question. If we invite non-Muslims to a Zoom session about any skills, how can we connect with the dawah? Uh, well, this is initiation. When it comes to initiation, like I mentioned, maybe you came late. 
But at the beginning, I mentioned that before giving da'wah to someone, we, if you can, you need to do one of the following. You need to get to know them. You need to tell them about yourself. You need to impress them. You need to inspire them. You, you want to win their heart. You want them to like you. Yeah. If you, if you are skilled in something, I know, Masha, you are still in branding, and you deliver in ihsan, in an excellent way, which a Muslim should do, not just, oh, I'll just do something, I'll just copy someone, no. Then uh, they'll be impressed. They go, wow, this person, this Muslim, this Muslim sister has amazing skills. She's kind of cool. I could learn from her. She could become a mentor. Now what you've done is you gain their trust. And once you gain their trust, and once they like you, once another person likes you, then they will listen to you. It's very simple. If someone likes you, they listen to you. If they don't like you, they won't listen to you. <laughs> do you understand? It's actually very simple. Yeah. So do you understand? So yeah, of course, absolutely try it. It's, it's a very good idea, Masha. And that's what I call thinking outside the box. You, you're not doing a lecture. You're doing a, uh, like a Zoom session, life hacks, skills, branding, whatever. And let the non-Muslim come, but obviously show great akhlaq. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you don't have to mention Allah and, and, and Rasul or Hadith at that time. But at the, mo- at the beginning, it's winning their heart. And then at some point, after a few Zoom sessions or whatever, maybe ask them a question. Can I ask you a question? And they go, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You're Now they're willing to, to engage with you, right? What do you think is the purpose of life? Have you heard about Islam? Have you, considered, have you considered accepting Islam? You have to ask that question at some point. Maybe not the first time, maybe not the second, but maybe the third or fourth. But the, you have to ask. Before they die, before they lose your contact with you, you have to ask the question. Otherwise... They, they could be in trouble in the Akhara. I want to give people, uh, uh, there are some questions. Um, Sister Homera, do we have any other questions uh, you've made a note of? Okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I want to give the people of uh, Mike priority first because, you know, Mazai Esmeh, you know, it's, the training session should be talking to each other, right? Uh, Sister Hina, KUP, Cup. Kurdish Union Party. No, no, I'm checking. <laughs> yes, sister, can you come on mic? Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, sir, actually, I wanted to ask, like, how to convince people who are really stubborn and they're not open to changes, and because they are um, following some old customs and practices since years, so it's a little tough to convince them. And especially if a, a, a new a new age girl or boy try to convince them, means youngsters, so they are not open to changes and they don't accept uh, things we say. So even if we are thinking you, out of the box, can you give a specific example of that not open to change? Like what are they doing? Change as in. An example of what they're doing that they should be doing, or they, what, what, what do they need to change, for example? Um, from my personal experience, if I could share a, a one minute or a half second uh, sure. incident, there was uh, this lady and um, she was actually poking and <laughs> trying to, um, uh, you know, uh, say to young girls that uh, wearing proper niqab and hijab is the right way to follow Islam. And when I tried to convince her that it's it's okay if someone is even having a hijab on their uh, head, they are covering their head, it's fine. But uh, she started lecturing me because uh, this way people, uh, you know, start hating Islam, especially if they are young. And mm-hmm. um, I tried my best to convince her that at least she's doing this and she's better than the other youth in our uh, society. But I was not able to convince her properly and um, sort of means they are not um, easy to convince. Mm. This is my main point. Okay, okay. Rocky, look, first of all, brothers and sisters, and a few people said it's, it's my same, uh, same question. One thing we need to really understand is look, I'm involved in motivating people for da'wah. And one of the reasons why people leave the da'wah, one of the reasons is because they say, nobody listens to me. I've had this. I've been doing da'wah for fla fla sir. I've been in da'wah for months and years and koini sunra. My family's not listening to me. My friends are listening to me. Ah, frustration, you get angry. Ah, oh, I don't want to da'wah. I walk off, right? 
I've had this so many times, okay? Now, the problem there is, see, we need people to be involved in our until the angel of death comes and takes your life away, takes your soul away. We need people to give dawah until the very end. We need lifelong. We need test innings. We, need, we don't need 100 or 2020 players when it comes to that. We need test players who, who score double, double, triple century. Yeah? Do you know what I mean? Yeah? So we need long, long innings yeah? until the day die. Which means that if we're going to be in dawah until the day we die, we need to stay motivated. We need, to, we, need to, we need to keep that passion. We need to keep that fire. One of the one of the ways which I keep doing it, and I, you can take an example for me and others, and where we, you know, Hamda, I was involved in Dawa for since '94, long time. Then I left for a while, then I came back, and I'm still here. Hamda, may Allah accept, right? Is because, and this may come as a shock to you. I'm not really bothered about results. Results are coming, shahadas, people changing, but I'm not really bothered about it, because the Dai needs to have a strong, positive, happy mindset. You need to be have a confident mindset, yeah. You need to. I, I'm always concerned about the mindset of the art. Like uh, as long as they're positive and they keep going, frustration is our enemy. Frustration is your dushman. F- getting fed up, frustration. Oh, this uni sunti and they're not listening and they're not changing. Ah, oh, what's the point of this? You need to completely ignore, yeah. Because the how results in the hands of Allah, there's a spiritual aspect of this as well, right? If you're given the out on all Muslims and you've given all the evidences, and if you're given the out on Muslim youth and you've given so many reasons and you've done it so beautifully and they're still not listening, if you get fed up, you know what you're doing? You're questioning the Qadr of Allah. Maybe Allah does not want them to be guided. Why? Allah is Hakim, Allah is Alim. Only Allah knows we are limited human beings. Let's keep, you know, we are, uh, let's keep to our pay grade, right? We can't go beyond our, we don't even know what's happening on the other side of the earth or the galaxy. Why do we want to even try and understand Allah's hikmah? Allah, hikmah is like, we, you know, so uh, if someone does not change, that's just the way it is. That's the way Allah wanted it. Yeah. What you need to do is not get frustrated. That's the game. You don't get frustrated, right? So do not worry about convincing. The other thing is, who says you have to convince the dawah is just passing on the message effectively, effectively, and to as many people as you can. If you're going to get, if you, if look, how many people are you, you know, if you're in Delhi or whatever city, if you're giving dawah to these two, three people, right? Again, you're thinking inside the box. If these people are not listening, then what about the others? Go to them. Who's, are they the only people on earth? <laughs> How many people, unless you, unless you live in a small village in India, which has a population of 10 and you have no, and the next people are like hundreds of miles away by, and there's no bus and there's no train and there's no camels. And these are the only people. Yeah. Then I can understand. Okay. Yeah. You have to keep going. And subhanAllah, you think of Nuh salam, how, you know, he had to give, you know, for 900 years, same people. Right. But unless, and I don't think you're in that situation, unless you're in that situation, move on. Move to the next person. Yeah, if they try, try as best you can. Try again. If not, okay, look, here I am. I'm here. Uh, I'm your friend, Hina. Yeah, you have my number. When you want to change, when you want to listen, when you want inspiration, I'm, I'm over there. Here's my number. Here's my Facebook. Contact me. But for now, goodbye. I'm gone. Yeah. Um, and that also, you know, when, by the way, that's a tip as well. I've done that. You, you know, the threat of leaving. They, they go, oh, no, no, please don't leave me. No, no, no. Okay, I'll change, I'll change. That also works as well. The threat of leaving them, the threat of saying, look, you know what? I'm not blocking you. I'm not blocking you. I'm just unfollowing you. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, I'm not blocking your number, but if you want me, I'm here, right? So the thing is, it's not about convincing. It's about passing the message on effectively as you can. And you know, when I, I think, Allah, subhanAllah, this is my tadabbar on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing your mentality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing your psychology. Is my slave going to get frustrated and fed up or is he going to keep on going in a cool, bold manner? Or is he going to get fed up after the first hurdle? You think that was easy? If that was easy, the world would have changed, the world would have changed by now. <laughs> that was always going to be tough. They, you know, we need people who are not going to change for us to have more Dawa to get more reward. Think about that. Yeah. So don't worry about convincing. Now, the other thing is you can do things to improve 
Yeah, again, like I said, the, you, so the dawah, the best way is to keep doing it, not get fed up. The more you don't get fed up, the more you keep doing it, the more things you learn, the more ideas get. Okay, this time I'll speak to this person this way. Okay, that didn't work. Now I'll speak to this person in this manner. Or oh, that didn't work. I'll, so you start thinking outside the box, you start thinking of ideas, right? The other way, the other thing is, um, you know, usually I think it's a back, lack of rapport. You've gone straight into the dawah. A lot of us go straight. If someone is in a haram relationship, if someone is doing something really evil, you will, the du'a, because we're Muslims and we get passionate, you will go straight to that issue. You say, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum. By the you know what that you're doing is haram. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf. If this person wanted to hear ayats, they would not be doing the haram in the first place. You need to get to know them. You need to build rapport. Rapport building is many ways. You need to compliment them. You need to see what skills they have. You need, to, you need to be funny if you're a joking person. Let them see your fun side. You need to tell them funny stories. You need to uh, tell them about your qualifications. You need to impress them with your academia and skills. Once there's a connection, it may take, it may take weeks or months. Once there's a connection, once there's a rapport is built and they like you and they trust you, then you can say, now, let me come to the point. I, I want to give also one other story of how... And this is no story. This is exactly what's happening. It happened with me. So we are, I, I was doing Dao stores in Islam. I used to live in Pakistan, Islamabad. And I used to do Dao stores in uh, Fast University and other universities. What I noticed is we were doing the stores, alhamdulillah, every month or every six weeks. We were doing the stores. We had the table. But what I noticed is people are being polite. What do I mean by that? We got youngsters, you know, uh, sisters who don't wear hijab and Muslim youth who are, you, you've got rock t-shirt on and earrings and that. You could tell that they're not practicing. They come to the stall, but they just nod away. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they even say, subhanAllah, oh yeah, mashallah. But, you, I, but they're not opening up. They're not, they're not connecting. They're not asking questions. I know they have questions in their head about Islam and Sharia and atheism. They have these questions, but they're not asking it. They're not asking these questions. Yeah. And, and we're just having a nice conversation. Yeah, this is youth club, but we're doing this and they go away. So what I did is I, I changed my style, yeah, to connect with them. What I did is, and this is the famous line that we use in our Effective Dao to Muslim Youth, inshallah, we'll do that training announced soon to some teams uh, at some point this year. I, when, I've done the, when I've got to know someone and I've told them about Purpose of Life and talk about Youth Club and what we're doing it, at the end, before they go, go, before you go, bro, can I just say, I don't have an agenda. I'm here for you. This is your chance to ask any question, no matter how weird, dark, strange, crazy. This is your chance. Yeah, I don't know your parents. Yeah, we are friends. I'm not here for your money. I'm not here begging for money. I don't have a political agenda, nothing. I'm just here for you, bro. Because I was also like this. I was also away from the dean. I was also lost, confused. Yeah, I've been through that. So now when, you, when I drop this line at the end, this is when they said, ah, okay, yes, I have a question, sir. I have a question. Yes, I have a question. I have a question. Then they start opening up. Yeah. So what my point is, I changed my style a bit. And when I started doing this, alhamdulillah, I'm so much more effective now. Now they're asking questions. They go, yeah, you know what? I don't want to ask, but yeah, I don't believe in God. Or I, I like atheism or agnosticism. Or I'm not sure about the Quran. Now they're asking before they wouldn't ask. So what the point is, learn from my uh, process. I did that. I kept doing it. It wasn't working. I changed my style. So that's what you need to do, inshallah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the answer to the question. Inshallah, I hope it helps. Alhamdulillah. Sister Marim, uh, because this is an international, um, uh, this is an international uh, Dawah training session, and my I can't read Urdu text properly. Please ask the questions in English, please. Anybody else want to come on mic? Otherwise, uh, Sister Homera, uh, any questions that I should take? Yes, there is a question from Brother Farhan that, sir, what about being open-minded? Is it good in today's world people take wrong meaning of open-minded? Yeah, open-minded, but within Islam. <laughs> so uh, the thing about Islam, the thing about Islamic Sharia is it's based upon, it's, a base, it's based upon thinking which is far bigger than this universe can offer. Yeah, Allah SWT, the creator of everything that exists, uh, what he knows 
no human will ever know. No human being that ever existed, no humans that are on this earth right now, and no human beings ever until this world ends and their judgment, will people know as much as Allah knows. So just think about that. Who or what is more open-minded? Our human being brains or Islam, and of course it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So the best, the best person, and this is a tip, this is a, again, this is a this is a uh, one of the miraculous proofs of Islam. That when, when people say you should be more open-minded, you should you know look into other cultures. Well, even then it's limited because whatever, whatever idea, whatever you're gonna keep your mind open to, is always limited to this earth. It's gonna be between that blue sky and this this ground that's not open mind is it that's within earth and then okay if you want to go beyond the earth then it's within this universe so whatever human beings think it will always be um inside the box it will never be that open-minded only islam can open your mind to a high extent because it comes from it comes from where he it comes from above it comes from beyond this creation so i don't know if you got that point so if you i say to normal everybody, well you know what if you really are open-minded, Islamic foundations within Islam can open your mind up more than anything else, more than any other religion, culture, anything, because it's because it's, it's come from something beyond our minds. It's come from something beyond our minds. So who is more open-minded, really, Muslims or non-Muslims? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? Anybody coming to Mike? I want to give Mike uh, option first, always. Or even a comment. Sister Sadia, can you come on mic? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. Um, sir, my brother is twelve year old, and he wants to. He wants me to ask a question from his side. May I ask? Yeah, sure. Where, where are you? Whereabouts are you guys from? Which city? I'm from Rajasthan. Rajasthan, India. mashallah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So he, he want he want to be a good Muslim, but but he fail again and again and uh, like so may I, may I speak in Hindi? Um, I got your question, so I can answer now. It's fine, inshallah. Because you know, look, it's uh, Adab al Majlis because um, people from all over the world are here, alhamdulillah. So it's good manners to speak in a universal language, inshallah. You can, okay, are you in touch with any DM uh, members? Yes, sir. Are you in touch? Are you with any DM members? Who do you know? Do you know, sister? Yes, I know, sir. Who do sister you know? Eman and sister Lubna. Okay, so mm -hmm. you can ask your question in Hindi voice note uh, through them, inshallah, uh, outside this mm -hmm. Zoom session. But I got your question. Okay. My, my advice yeah, to you. Young, what, what's your brother's name? What's his so name? His name is Shahid Khan, and he wants to he want to change, and um, like uh, he misbehave with my mother sometimes. But after some time, he regret and uh, he, he says that I want to change, but uh, I don't know what happened. So he say he said to me that ask to like any any YC speaker, then uh, what, whatever they will say, I will take it as a medicine. So give him any advice. Okay. So look, Shahid Khan, Shahid Khan Saab, Masha, very nice name, first of all, yeah? Shahid, bro, can I just say the fact that you want to keep changing, it, but it doesn't happen. So you try and change and you yeah. fail. You try again, you fail. The fact that you're doing that, that is commendable. I think you're doing brilliant, mashallah. Continue doing that, yeah? continue doing that keep on doing it don't so this process of you change for a few days you be good and then you the fifth day you go bad again and then your th next three days you're good and then you and the sixth day you go bad again that is fine because this is something normal first of all don't think it's bad right so keep it up do not give up right secondly bro you have the only way to stay the only way to change is two aspects is to seek knowledge and seek knowledge of allah you know, once you understand Allah, once you understand how much he loves you, when you understand, and you've got to do this by reading and you've got to put some time into it, yeah? You can't just hope for it. Oh, I want to change. Oh, I want to change. Oh, man, I want to change. 
yaar kab kyon mara change <laughs> it doesn't work like that you have to put the effort into it yeah if you want to go uh, and become a, a doctor let's say cuz you want to get out of rajasthan maybe you want to travel the world are you just going to sit in your living room with a pankha and just sit there i want to become a doctor i want to become a doctor i want to become a doctor okay yaar what time am i a doctor am i going to get a doctor now or am i doc- no you're going to take the exams you're going to study you're going to you're going to spend some nights you're going to read books you're going to watch videos you're going to take notes you're going to exchange you're going to study hard inshallah yeah so that you become a doctor you've been not good money enough money you can help your family you can be successful alhamdulillah you have to put effort in same with islam you have to put effort into it. you you get to know allah you get to know how much you know, you understand how much he loves you through the text and then you will love allah once you have this love of allah you will be in awe of him and when you have awe of allah then you then you will fear him once you have that fear instilled in your mind and heart then inshallah any haram that comes your way you're going to ignore it you're going to move on from it it's going to be easier yeah you have to get to know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to seek knowledge um the other thing is maybe knowledge is there's there's obviously random lectures and stuff this is this is more training but go for a series yeah go for a series yeah and one brother said uh, somebody just put uh, mashallah very good um okay can we not use the word j here yeah <laughs> careful brother this is uh sira so sira is very good let the prophet just go for the sira yeah uh, sheikh yasir qadi has got one abdul nasir jangda has got one like hundreds of hours yeah you know so you see what it is why why are netflix why they create series long series that go on for months because this is what human mind wants they want like a, like a like a regular dose regular dose yeah same with islam now so sira this is about you know hundreds of hours watch half an hour every day and you're taking a long journey 6 7 months 8 months and it's going to slowly slowly steep in to inshallah uh, and also look lastly bro you know at eat salah after you in sujood after you praise the most high subhana rabbi al ala praise be to allah praise be to my allah the most high after your sujood maybe also in tahajjud if you can yeah in tahajjud in sujood beg allah to guide you beg allah to give you istikama because only he can give you guidance yeah so do that inshallah and then you know we're all going to make dua for you bro i think everyone should make dua for shahid khan inshallah uh, that allah guides this young brother and not only guides him but also makes an uh, amazing dai some day a, a caller of allah a lover of allah a caller of allah maybe even a sheikh one day maybe maybe an intellectual one day maybe this shahid will be the next big scholar that the ummah needs a leader a just leader inshallah yeah that's your vision bro inshallah um you know study hard study study the sciences and study the deen as well inshallah have a bigger vision yeah these small haram these small sins these small buzzes a girl maybe messaging you uh, a music track these are temporary buzzes man honestly they don't last and they're not going to help you they i'm um, trust it's, it's it's rubbish it's nonsense i've been there it's it's a trick it's all a trick this these little gadgets and these little haram uh, relationships and music and wasting time and watching something on on your screen which you're not allowed to uh, you know something filthy i'm telling you bro it's this pathetic and and one last thing yeah you have to have a conviction that you're going to get jannah one day mashallah you're muslim and in jannah and again this comes a knowledge study the ayats of the quran Look, go to mercy servant sorry go to the youtube channel and find out descriptions of jannah there's very serious on it you need to really look forward to jannah look forward to jannah then that will act like a motivator and you could do anything you want in jannah man you could do anything you want this world cannot provide for that jannah will provide for that yeah hope that helps you inshallah brother shahid mela roji i uh, will take one last question on mic and then uh, we we'll call it a day how to parda apparently uh sister sana can you come on mic okay i'm not sure what you're asking uh are you asking about hijab you want to keep the hijab 
Uh, for that, I will I will ask one of the sisters because I always believe when it comes to hijab, sisters should advise sisters. Inshallah, you don't hear from a male. Um, but uh, if anybody wants to give quick advice, sister, anyone, any of the sister DM network sisters, do you want to come on mic and give some just quick nasiha? Just put your hand up. Yeah, yeah. Look, brothers and sisters, hijab and niqab, they're both okay. Let me repeat that. Hijab or niqab, they're both valid. They're both okay, inshallah. It's not one or the other. Sister Samina is asking a very interesting question. How can you motivate poor non-Muslims Islam? Okay, Sister Samina, can you come on mic? Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, Salaam wa sister. Where are you from? Which city? Um, Lahore. Lahore. Okay, Masha. Welcome, sister. Uh, so uh, you're asking, can you ask your question again? Um, I've come across a few people, um, you know, here who are like maids and they're non-Muslims, like mostly Christians. And um, they do believe in many things that we do, but they're reluctant to uh, listen more to Islam. And, you know, I've, I've tried a few times to give dawah. Uh, how, how have you given doubt to them? What, what, what have you said? What kind of stuff have you talked about? I'm always telling, um, you know, good things about um, becoming a Muslim, about Jannah, and uh, hereafter, and reward from Allah. So if you have more points I can add, that would be great. Because okay, um, okay. they do respect our religion. It's not that. They celebrate all the events, all the Islamic um, things that we do. It's just that uh, they're looking to change. Okay, humble. Jazakallah, like sister. So look, uh, I with the question and with, I mean, I'm not gonna, I, I, I'll, I'll address it as Christians, not, it doesn't matter if you're poor or non-poor because everybody's welcome to Islam, first of all, right? And uh, and of course, you know, if you have a relationship with Allah, then Allah makes things easy for you. Yeah, when you, if you're, you could say to look, I mean, I use this once. If you're non-Muslim and you've always, if you're a Christian, you've always been praying to God to to get you out of poverty or to help you financially, and it's not, and it's not working. I say, well, why don't you become Muslim and do dua then? Let's see if it works then, and it will more likely work then. <laughs> So, you know, if your du'as in your religion is not working, try the du'a in Islam. But to get the du'a, you to enter Islam first. Um, so that's one thing. Secondly, uh, I mean, it depends which type of Christian, if they are, their knowledge or not. Most are not, I know. Uh, most are following Christianity because their family is Christian. Just like Muslims. We are Muslims because our parents are Muslim. We believe in Allah because my parents told me. So with Christians, yes. I think you need to talk about, for example... They need to know that Allah is al wudud and uh, the most loving. Yeah, one of the key, key things which I think a lot of non-Muslims, especially Christians, need yeah. to know about is the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, his life, his teachings, and why he was a prophet. So, for example, in our training, we go through which is why the Prophet peace be upon him is couldn't be a liar, couldn't be deluded, couldn't be crazy. That means he can be truthful. Then you can actually prove it intellectually and academically. Of course, when you're speaking to uh, the person in front of you, you, you speak very basic language and very simple, so you make it less academic, but you can actually prove it. You can say, look, if I can prove to you in the next 10 to 15 minutes, give you solid reasons why he was not a liar, he could not be deluded, not crazy, and he was definitely telling the truth, then what does that mean? That means that he's definitely true, and whatever he says is true. If he says God exists, it's true. If he says the Quran is the final message, that's true. Because now I'll prove to you that he is the final prophet. And then you talk about his teachings, how, you know, a lot of non-Muslims, not Christians, they do not know about uh, how Prophet treats his wives and women and children and orphans. They don't know that. Yeah. They only know that he was fighting and established in politics. Yeah. He had so many beautiful sides to him because Christians in their belief, Jesus is critical. Jesus is central figure. So they will love Jesus. They will know about Jesus. They will understand Jesus. He is a central figure. He's a huge so, uh, triune, right? one of the one of the triune parts is you, right? Uh, God man. So that means they they understand human. Now we need to give a human being from our religion, which is Prophet Muhammad Sassam, right? So now they need to love the Prophet Sassam, and it's easy to, to fall in love with Prophet Sassam when you tell them that his teachings, how he treated people, how amazing it was, his characteristics, maybe even 
subhanAllah, maybe there's, you can tell that how, you know, how some people, when they even looked, I think there was one person, Bedouin, I can't remember, he looked at him in except Islam. Like he, he had a beautiful smile. Uh, he had, you know, the way he walked with authority. I mean, this is so inspiring. When you hear these things, any human being will be moved, right? So um, that's what you could do, inshallah. Talk about the Prophet Muhammad. And I wouldn't advise going debating about, about Bible and, and, and try and bash the Bible. Leave that. Because, you know, the, 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 that's, uh, it's messy or going on. But these are some points, inshallah. Uh, brothers and sisters, we've been going on for nearly an uh, hour and a half. We'll end it there. Um, uh, Sister Homer and Tuba and others, if you can collect the questions, inshallah. So just go up and copy a question and then we'll answer it. I will answer it either through Instagram, through stories, or I will answer it in the next session, or I will answer it uh, through a blog uh, or a Facebook page, inshallah. I will definitely answer it, inshallah. I always try and get around to questions. Um, that man was Abu Dhar. Okay, mashallah, jazakallah, Sister Hina. Hina. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, any feedback, do give it in the wherever you see the advert. So maybe you can go on to the uh, Dao Motivation Instagram and do a comment there. Because what happens when you do a comment, other people will be inspired as well, inshallah. And maybe they'll come to the next one. And because you get reward as well, inshallah. Yeah. So um, uh, good to see uh, Eliza. Welcome. Uh, we, we, she's from Melbourne. I will connect you to some sisters afterwards, but I'll get your feedback, Eliza. So uh, thank you very much for coming. And, uh, you know, we're here to answer your questions about Islam. And, uh, and, you know, obviously as a Muslim, as a Muslim, I would love for you to become a Muslim someday, Eliza, you know, and uh, you'll def definitely you have a, a life upgrade if you accept Islam. But uh, yeah, so we're here to help. Uh, you know, please welcome Eliza. She's a non-Muslim looking at Islam from Melbourne and uh, her knowledge, her, her, her journey will continue. Yeah. So. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you very much for attending everyone. Jazak Lahir, may Allah reward you, may Allah bless you. Uh, I'll see you next session. Look out for it. We may do it at, on the same day and the same time, inshallah. Yeah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashulala ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa tuba alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.